Night One coverage of Noah's In One Victory 2023. I'm your host, Dylan Fox, and I know we did the show previewing the entire tournament with both Dean and Dr. Jonathan, and I look forward to having them come on and talk more about Noah when they come in. And Jonathan, uh, wish him well on his flight. I know he's probably in the air as we speak, as we record this, going to Japan. Hopefully he can get there in time and do some fun things, uh, going to these shows, going all over Japan. It's going to be some cool stuff going on. But Fortnite won. I've been, uh, we've been working on this to get together for a long time now, uh, for a couple months at least, because I was a part of one of his videos uh, on, on YouTube here. This is one of the first ever editions of me having a YouTuber on here, a YouTube creator. Uh, and you can follow his channel at Wrestling With The Narrative on YouTube. And he's got a few videos, but the one I was a part of was uh, the Timothy Thatcher video talking about how underrated he is, which kind of gives a, a good shot for it to be on because right now we had him in the main event. Timothy Thatcher in the main event versus the GHC heavyweight champion. So I had to have him on. Squill, how are you doing? I am doing less good than if Timothy Thatcher had won. Ooh, that's the, that's the thing about this. If he had won, we would have had a, a celebration. It would have been a mutual celebration. But, hey, he is going to win some matches at this tournament. Don't, don't get it twisted. And look at it this way. Thatcher. Despite uh, not being a Japanese, he is currently a champion in Noah. Uh, he's part of the tag team champion, so they have given him some love lately. Uh, co- coming in, obviously, for all kinds of places. Uh, you know, he was how- undefeated in singles competition in Noah for I think until he fought uh, uh, Kiyomiya for the title, right? That's right. That was in November of last year. And uh, I know me and Dean both loved that match. A uh, great match that he had. And I'm a huge Timothy Thatcher fan as well. Um, in, in the video you made, I was a big fan of your work. I, I played a very minor role in, in it, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, I had a short part, and other talented people were really good as well. Uh, you know, people like Joseph Montesio were, were on there. Uh, you had a lot of good, good dudes on there. So uh, Timothy Thatcher always uniting the world. I think that is his purpose, to bring us the world together through great technical and hard-hitting wrestling, which we will talk about later. But he showed that on this show, I would say, pretty effectively. And this whole tournament coming in, well, I, I, let's talk about the vibe check for you, Squill. Get, get people familiar with you. What was your vibe coming into the tournament? How excited were you? What did you think of the blocks? Did you have an idea of who you who you thought might win or some of the favorites? Um, so, you know, going into it, there Noah is pretty much like split down the middle, half and half for me, of guys I really like and find really interesting and guys who bore the shit out of me. So when I'm looking at some of these blocks, it's like I am a big fan of like there's some truly great wrestlers here. I love Timothy Thatcher, uh, Timothy Thatcher, love Go Shizaki. You know, I love Nakajima. I think um, Masa uh, Kitamiya is really underrated. But there's also guys like Adam Brooks or Jack. Basically, the most of the the white guys they bring in are pretty bland to me. <laughs> So I was interested to see which ones would be, like, unexpectedly great and which ones would be, like, car crashes. So I just really wanted Timothy Thatcher to, like, I'm really hoping he, you know, maybe wins the block, maybe not. Like, at least one of the guys who's interesting go on a crazy run. Because last year, um, I didn't really see it coming, but uh, Hideki Suzuki was, like, amazing in his uh, N1 run. So hoping for something like that. Absolutely. Hideki is a longtime EO fans will know that he is one of my favorites. And, and Thatcher is kind of like him, <laughs> pretty much. Like, they're very similar wrestlers at the end of the day. Yeah, and yeah, a great tag team as well. I thought that's uh, something I wish they had done. You know, we'll have our thoughts on Saxon Huxley on, on this show, his Thatcher's current tag partner. But Thatcher definitely good in there. We made our predictions already. Uh, they, they set off a lot of stuff. You had two outsiders here, and I know that you're not as familiar with them, but did you have any expectations for Anzai and Yoshioka from All Japan and Dragon Gate, respectively? Uh, Anzai, I did not. Yoshioka, I had heard, like, some generically good things about, 
and his match was like pretty decent to me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's the guy that you look at here. Uh, coming in as a smaller guy, but in Noah, that's not as big of a problem as some other companies. You know, you have guys like Keno in there. Uh, you know, so Adam Brooks, you mentioned earlier. Uh, even Nakajima was a junior for a long time. So you, you've got a lot of guys who maybe aren't the traditional heavyweights. So Yoshioka fit in pretty well. We'll talk about him in a little bit. Anzai, his reputation. He, he died. Like in that in his match, I was impressed by the all the bumping he did. Honestly, oh yeah, well, we're gonna talk about that because I do have some thoughts on that match in particular. But Anzai's rep in, coming into this was as the super rookie, pretty much of all Japan. Uh, he's he hasn't even debuted a year ago, but already got a triple crown shot. Already competed in the Champion Carnival, had six points in there. And uh, another thing I want to shout out again, I did it with Strig on the on the main show, but. They did a fantastic job of the YouTube videos they uploaded with the interviews of these guys. You, you know, you got to learn a little bit about every competitor, their motivations, and who they are as characters heading into the tournament. So I thought they did a fantastic job hyping it up. Uh, the first night, the attendance was very low uh, for Yokohama Budokan, which is kind of disappointing uh, overall. But just like last year, they were saying that before, but the end of the tournament, Hideki and Kaito had a great house at the end, very high energy crowd. You want to see that uh, in this tournament. Come in with the end, get something good uh, at the finals and have the people passionate. Then it'll all work out all right uh, overall. And are you telling me, you mentioned all these bland white guys Noah has. Are you telling me you weren't missing Anthony Green and Stallion Rogers uh, on, on, in this tournament? The normal group of generic white guys? Anthony Green is like... <sighs> I have some – he can enter – he's entertained me on a higher hit rate than some of the other guys, but yeah. It's the mustache. Mm-hmm. Uh, overall, that gives him something to stand out on. Well, he can make – he makes silly faces sometimes, and that's kind of – if you look at me loving Timothy Thatcher, sometimes that's really what you need in a good pro wrestler. We were talking before the show, and I, I told I told you, and I'll tell the world right now, I'm a very simple person when it comes to wrestling. I want people who hit hard. And if they make goofy faces in between, then so be it. That's my thought at the end of the day. So that's what we need more of. But I, the, the, the mustache and the faces does help that uh, overall. And he was in the tournament last year, but not this year. He's kind of been more of a junior uh, as things have, things have gone along. Uh, did you have any thoughts about them removing people like uh, – obviously, Sugera's injured. That's nobody's fault. But maybe like a Mara Fuji or Fujita, the, the older class that they had. They kind of got through those guys this year. Yeah, those guys definitely would have added some like – I don't know whether to call it like legitimacy to the tournament. But like there are a lot of like – there's just very clear haves and have-nots, I guess, in this tournament. That makes it a little bit like – Ooh, or like how much is a, cause in the G1, even when there's some bums, it's normally like people are high enough in the card that the wins and losses mean something. But here, some of these guys are like, does that really make you look like a, like a big surgeon contender if you beat, uh, like Lance and Hawaii? You know, it's like, you know. Yeah. But I'll tell you, you're going. No, no, that was about all I had. All right. Uh, I'll tell you one of the haves, though, and that is Katsuhiko Nakajima. Have you seen his match with Kento Miyahara from last month, which a lot of people were talking about? I've seen a little bit of it. I have not watched the whole thing, but it's on my watch list. Of, I've just been backed up with work because I know that thing goes like 30 minutes, so I need to dedicate my attention to it. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I totally understand that. But a lot of people have called that a match of the year level match. And that's given Nakajima a lot of a boost going into the tournament. Uh, before we get to the card, we'll run it down from bottom to top here. I'll ask you one thing. Did you have any prediction on who is going to win the tournament? I just kind of assumed that, uh, like, God is dead. So it would just be, like, uh, like Jake Lee winning it somehow. I don't know. <laughs> As the champion. Yeah. Well, in his video, he said champions never lose. So yeah. if he loses, then that means he's not a champion anymore, according to his own words. Yeah. 
So that means he has to pull Sonata, go go undefeated, and win, win the tournament as the champion. Uh, going I in there, have, I just have very little faith in Noah's booking. I, I can see that by making that prediction. And, and hey, that line of thinking has benefited you as you've been proven right many times. Uh, at the end of the day, so you are on the right side of history, my friend. Uh, this. Uh, obviously, to spoil our preview show that we did, uh, all of us, me, Dean, and Dr. Jonathan, had all different predictions <laughs> for the winner. So that that can be looked at as good or bad, depending on your your point of view. But for me, it's good because it means the tournament's open. It's not some, oh, well, you know Okada's winning this. Like you know, It's not like that. You've got a lot of different contenders. Um, whether it, I picked Nakajima, we're going to talk about. Uh, Dean picked Keno. And Dr. Jonathan picked Go, uh, Go. So you got three or four different contenders here that are all reasonable winners. So uh, it just depends on your point of view. Hopefully it's somebody good. Do you have an opinion? I, before we get on here again, one more question. I know I totally lied and said this would be the last thing, but I'm going to ask another one. What do you think of Jake's title reign so far? As an outsider coming into Noah, there was a lot of talk. Some haters <laughs> that were talking a lot when he came over. But what do you think about his, how he's handled himself as champion so far? See, I feel about Jake Lee the way I used to feel like Kent, uh, I used to feel about Kento Miyahara and that like he doesn't, he's fine and he, my, I've warmed up on Miyahara, but like I, there's some guys who are like, I can only describe them as baseline mediocre. But if they can allow themselves to be, like, elevated by other talent. So, so far, Jake Lee, whenever he's been involved in a match with another guy of his level, it's been like, eh. But when he's fought guys who are, like, I would say clearly more talented than him, he's able to, you know, work up to their caliber. So that's been kind of reassuring. But I don't necessarily find him the most compelling on his own. Especially Sugira. That that match was so good. Uh, like, but yeah. all of Sugiro's matches are great. Like, no, no matter who he's against, uh, at the end of the day, he could face any wrestler, and I think get the best out of them. Uh, at the end of the day, and he's very missed in this tournament. I, w- I wish he was in facing these guys. I think he would add a lot, but he is injured, so you can't blame anybody. But uh, we miss you, Sugiro. That's the main point we need to have on this show. But nevertheless. <laughs> I don't know if you get what I'm saying, though, but not, you know, there's some wrestlers that even if you put them in the ring with, like, Brian Danielson, they would okay. find a way to fuck it up. Like, oh. at least at least Jake Lee can, like, work up to someone really, really good. Yeah, I, I totally get what you're saying on there. Now, I think that was kind of his rep a lot of times in All Japan. Uh, all of his best matches were against Kento, his natural rival. Uh, I'm kind of with you. Me and Dean have had this conversation a long time. Uh, D- Kento is one of these guys that I kind of struggle with because you hear everybody else talk about him, and it's like he's one of the greatest. But for me, I don't really feel that way about him most times. And yet, like I feel like he's overrated a lot of the time. But then at the end of the year, you look, and suddenly he's got 18 four-star matches uh, that, 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 that he had in the year. That's like, oh, well, I guess he is pretty good. And I know, I know, that, like, so me and Dean were talking about that on the last show. I think we need to accept our fate that we are Kento maniacs for Kento. <laughs> Hulk. And at the end of the day, the Hulk Hogan inspired Kento <laughs> here. Uh, but I told you what you're saying about Jake, and that was kind of his rep in all Japan. Mm-hmm. I think he's done a great job, and Noah has a great roster of guys that can get that out of him. As mm-hmm. well, I would say. So that kind of guy works better in Noah than it does in New Japan, in my opinion. Uh, mm-hmm. to, because you could get in some duds. You, you know, that, like, look at Sonata's G1 run. Because you could say that about him, too, that, like, if he's in the right guy, maybe he could step up and do something great. But then you put him against Chase Owens, and it's like, oh. Like, this well, yeah, one- I like Sonata versus Jungle Boy. I thought that was really good. But then you put, like you said, Sonata versus Chase Owens, and you're like, ugh. Yeah, it's like a four, out of, like four. It's like four or five out of ten, like two star special <laughs> type of deal here. Uh, if, if, if Jake were in that role, I think he would probably have a similar run uh, to Sonata at the, at the end of the day. But then you have guys like Sugira and Nakajima and, and Mar Fuji turned back the clock in May. Uh, you had some good stuff there, so you, they've surrounded him with good people in this tournament to get the most out of him. Um, but regardless of that, I think that the the first match of the tournament was your B block. Opener. Uh, there were a couple of non-tournament matches, but we we don't care about 
Rose. Uh, at the end of the day, the only good part of that is that Kota Gay got a, was on a winning team and one of these, and Yoshioka too. So my, both of my guys in the junior division got a win there. Uh, but the first tournament match was in B Block. Manabu Soya beating Katsuhiko Nakajima in a match that has widely been discussed as perhaps uh, the best match on the on the show. I have it up there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what did you think of this match? Um, it was, in terms of, like, my expectations were maybe not the highest, because, like I said, not the not, not for this match, just the card overall, because obviously Nakajima is a badass. But I tuned in, and it was great to be the first thing I saw, because I, I, I went back and watched the six mans afterwards, but I was like, I'm going to see the actual block matches before I, like, want to kill myself after watching six mans. Um, but getting to see that as the first thing on the card was awesome. Nakajima being, you know, trained by Kensuke Sasaki and basically being his, like, adopted son was really interesting because the fact that Soya, a lot of the time, wrestles like Kensuke Sasaki as just, like, this sentient golem of, like, meat. And I really fucking enjoyed just a sprint of a match. That's a great point. I never really thought of Soya... And Sasaki, that's very similar before, but when you say it, it makes perfect sense. Uh, and I think Soy is a guy that's had a really great – he's got a great run this year. I think a lot of people have taken notice of him uh, as somebody who really has stepped up and improved from years past. He's a guy that's been around for a long time, trained all the way back in Muto's All Japan. And I thought he had a lot of potential back then, but they just never lived up to it. Uh, you know, pretty much in Wrestle 1 was wasted years uh, for him. But he's really come into his own. Away from Congo, you got rid of the red. He's all in black now. Got a very basic look. Somewhat similar to what they kind of did with uh, Taniguchi uh, after they got rid of the gimmick he had, uh, the Maybach gimmick. He just comes is in black. Weird, is it so yeah. weird that I'm kind of a big Taniguchi guy? I like Tani. I'm an OG Taniguchi defender. Uh, everybody talks bad about him because of the gimmick. But if you look at him as himself, every time he wrestles as just Shuhei Taniguchi, he's delivered. Uh, whether it's the team of Marfuji, the team of Sugira, on his own wrestling guys, that guy is a good worker. I, I wish he was in the tournament. Just, just not leading uh, the Funky Express. <laughs> like that, that's all. I'm like Kobashi, where he he looked down upon him for a Funky Express right now. Um, but this was a good match, though. Um, I liked how they kind of played into because right now they're going through the Axis reunion, right, with Nakajima and Go, and they kind of he's come in, he shaved the beard off, he's got the clean cut face again. He's kind of trying to merge his past two looks in a different way now, but. Here he wrestled like a total dick, <laughs> pretty much. He he was throwing Soy into the guardrail. He poked him in the eyes. They kicked him in the back. It was it, he was doing that kind of stuff going in there. And Soya, just like I said, hey, they traded back and forth. Nakajima would kick him. Soya would throw a chop back and forth there. They did some good stuff there. Uh, but in the end, Soya he got this uh, wild DDT, uh, kind of shades of like a Hashimoto <laughs> here, like a Shinya. Uh, with the, the jumping DDT, I thought this was a really good match. Me too, man. And l like I said, of Nakajima's look, I think, really plays in well here, especially now that he's looking more like his older self a little bit, just because I think there's very much a contrast of, like, Nakajima is not really a pretty boy wrestler, but con compared to Soya, he is. <laughs> it's just because, like I said, sentient, like, hunk of meat. So it just him being such a dick and the resiliency of Soya, I think, just made it so fun. Yeah, this totally worked. But we're debuting a new feature on this show, which is, of course, the Squilliam Fancy Sun rating system. So what 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 did you rate this match? I gave it so for context. My if something is like four and a half, that means it's probably top ten to top twenty in a year, right? So I'm going off that Melcher star system. So I gave this four and a quarter in that that's like one of the best matches in like a few weeks because I, I really enjoyed it. I'm totally with you. I use a very similar way. Like, you know, it, it's if you're not a top 10 or 20 match of the year, you're probably not getting four and a half. 
uh, for, for me at the end of the day. And five stars is very rare. I know me and Dean had a conversation about that in the past, about the differences in our ratings. I gave this four stars flat. And that is, like, a great match, must-see match. Like, that's what four stars means for me. Like, a legit great. Not just good, but great. Uh, you know, and uh, so that's kind of how I rate that. Uh, you know, definitely got to watch it. It is kind of what four stars means. So four and a quarter, just on the verge of being something really special, but not quite there, just really, really good. You'll definitely like it if you watch it. I think I think this kind of match would appeal to most fans. So uh, The big compliment I can give it – oh, sorry. No, go on. The biggest compliment I can give it is normally I complain that matches are too long because I generally think that a lot of matches that go 30 don't need to go 30. Um, however, this is the rare match that I feel like could have gone like two, three more minutes and been even better. Yeah, the DDT kind of came out of nowhere for the finish too. Yeah. Like if you – this might have been, you know, top 20 in the year if there were like – two to three more minutes of that comeback. Yeah, I could get behind that. And I thought Nakajima didn't lose anything in the loss either. He was really the top of the match for a while of it. And uh, like you said, I think I agree with you, actually. If this, this could have been a, like a you know, low-end match of the year type of deal if they had gone on a little bit more uh, to build up that comeback that Soya made. Um, the next match we had was an A-block match. They kind of went B-A, B-A, B-A. Uh, on the card. So going back to the other block, you had Yoshiki Inamura versus Jack Morris. Uh, he may be a bland white guy, but mm-hmm. he has gotten over with the crowd of Noah, I think, more than the others. Like, of, of all of their foreign talent, he is the one that people take to the most just because you've got this good-looking guy. It's kind of this goofy gimmick that people meme and play with. And, and he does have a great look. I'll give him that. Uh, he's definitely improved from where he was at last year. But how do you think he handled himself here against Inamura? I mean, I'm not going to say he's not a mediocre white guy still. However, the crowd made it a little better than I thought it would be because I was I saw the runtime on this and I was like, uh, okay. But he definitely he brought a smile to my face at certain points of the match, which is something I really he really hasn't done for me before. Like since he debuted in Noah, he's like changed a lot. So it was actually some surprisingly nice uh, heel work for me. Yeah. And Inamura is like one of my favorite dudes uh, in in wrestling. I I love what that guy brings to the table. Uh, I think he he is a, a great wrestler a lot of the times. And you saw some big spots here. I mean, you had a spot where he flew off the top rope with this, like, shoulder tackle missile move uh, that I thought was really good. Uh, Jack was doing a little bit of stuff here, uh, like the big frog splash he did. Uh, you got some big stuff there. You got a moonsault uh, at one point. Uh, they tried to do some stuff here, but I didn't think this really got to the next level. I thought it was a, a solid match, but to me, I wouldn't give this the, the wreck. Uh, I gave this three and a quarter. Uh, what, what did you give? I gave it three. I also think I'm pretty sure fairly early, um, Inamora uh, fails to catch uh, Jack, and it's oh, yeah. kind of uh, it's not really a knock against them as workers. It's just overall kind of hilarious. Yeah, that is true, and it didn't play in anything like you said. It was just a, it, nobody's perfect in their lives. I may love Inamura, but he can't catch all these big guys flying at him. At the time, he's only human, people, at the end of the day. Uh, then, then we got a B-block match, and it was the aforementioned Yuma Anzai versus Lance Anawaii, which uh, obviously a relative of Roman Reigns in the Samoan wrestling dynasty. Uh, he is Noah's answer to the tribal chief and MLW representation heavily on here. I got to say something, Squill. Yeah. I, I didn't have a lot of expectations for Anawai coming into this match. I thought this match so overachieved. Uh, I thought this was, like, so fun to watch. Anzai, he seemed determined to make him look as good as possible. He was bumping all over the place. You kind of mentioned it earlier. I thought this was so good, uh, like, way better than I thought. Very entertaining. Uh, and Anzai is a great, like, underdog baby face. You can see... Everybody sees this guy as the future of Japanese wrestling, 
And mm. when you see him have a match with this guy, and it's like this, somebody who I didn't have any expectations for, I was like, man, Anzai is the man. I, I loved it. Yeah, I have it verbatim. My notes are Lance does some great work on offense, but can't sell to save his life. Thankfully, yeah. Anzai bumps his ass off. Because, yeah, uh, Lance seems like one of those guys who, well, especially because, you know, he was the Simone SWAT team in MLW. He's like, seems to be a guy who's the perfect, like, tag worker, where you throw him in with a guy who knows what he's doing and then let him come in for, like, a hot tag to do a bunch of power shit. Yeah. And Anzai was the exact guy they needed to put him in here with in order to make him look impressive. So I've come out of this. I am a believer in Anzai now. I will, you know, get a T-shirt, tattoo it onto my skull. Uh, and Lance didn't look that bad either. Yeah, you don't have to tattoo it on your skull, but I'm glad that you believe in him now. I will say that. I'm glad, I'm glad he won your faith at least. But yeah, I, I, I don't know if I overrated this. I, I had this at three and a half stars. That's exactly what I had as well. And w- with my system, that's like normally, if I was like on an episode of Dynamite, it'd be like maybe, uh, the best match of the night, you know? Yeah, I totally get it. For me, three and a half, when I give something three and a half, that's my baseline for a recommendation. Like, hey, yes. check this out. You know, pretty much. Like, because three and a quarter, that's a good match. If you like it, you won't hate yourself. You'll think, oh, that was pretty good. But it wasn't, I won't put my full stamp of approval on it. When you get to three and a half, that's when I say, hey, this is a recommendation. You've got to watch this. At that's the end what, of the day. Uh, I keep an end of the year list of the, to make, in order to make the list, you have to be minimum three and a half. I see perfect baseline. I would say yeah. there. So good stuff there. Glad we agree. I'm glad you liked that too because I didn't know if I was at the lunch because the cage matchers didn't like it very much. Uh, they rated it low, and I was like, man, this match was so awesome, though. Uh, There's going to be a match later on in which I will have that same opinion. And yeah, we will talk about that uh, later on. Obviously, the inmates yeah. are at the be-all, end-all, but I will shout yeah. them out. Uh, they, they put their effort in. They put their time in. Uh, uh-huh. You know, so to to watch and review some of these matches, and uh, you know, we'll see we'll see where we go next. But A Block was the next match where you had uh, the affirmation again, y- Yuki Yoshioka versus Masaki Tamiya, Big Masa coming in, oh, the, the Dragon Gate guy. Uh, what do you think of this match overall? Because we talked about it a little bit earlier, but uh, what do you think overall? Well, I mean, I was ultimately sad that uh, Kitamiya didn't get the win. Um, I'm also a huge Masa guy. Like, I appreciate, I'm literally, Masa Saito, the guy who, uh, you know, his name is a tribute to, is literally going to be the subject of my next video. Uh, so I very much like him, but it was really good, like, it, always in a tournament you get that, like, clash of styles, or it's, you know, in this case, Dragon Gate dude versus, like, another big meat golem. But it was really interesting that Masa was the underdog. Because it, oh, it's kind of like when, uh, I don't know, some in like the 80s or something, when you have a dude like Hogan or the Ultimate Warrior who has to make a comeback despite being way bigger. And it's a dynamic I really enjoy. It makes sense considering his card placement because Yoshioka is a former champion. Uh, Dragon Gate is kind of like their – one of their top stars. Uh, you know, I don't know if they have an ace overall in DG, but he's one of the top guys. Uh, had a really good title reign last year. Has respect. Uh, he came in here, and they did some high-flying stuff as well. Uh, you had him do the, the Topico Hero on the outside. Uh, they even did – they got into it where – I love the spot where Yoshioka shot him into the ropes, reversed the shoot into the ropes, and he came back with, like, a leaping clothesline where he just put his whole body into the, the oh, yeah. clothesline. Uh, and I was like, yeah, like, this is what I want to see. Like, you have to use every bit to not to knock the big man down. Uh, that was good. There were some good spots where they kind of had a chop battle. They did that multiple times, too. And they, there was a spot where Akita B was, like, he started to fire up a little bit. Like, the chops were powering up, up even more. Uh, that, that was really good. And... Uh, they really put over Yoshioka well here. I thought he did a good job. Um, and he won with the Inferno, which is like uh, like this leaping co- uh, code breaker. Pretty code much. breaker, yeah. yeah. Um, so I thought this was a good match. Like, uh, well, well done enough. I agree with you about the size difference. 
Uh, you would have wanted Kitamiya to start off strong, but they're going to protect. They, they always want to get the outsiders over. This whole show was basically that. Like, <laughs> like get the outsiders over was kind of a big thing on the show. You got Anamai win. I will mm-hmm. talk about Brooks later. Uh, and now this here, and they respected him here. So, but I, I still like this. I probably had more fun watching the uh, the match before, but this was kind of on the same level, and maybe even a little better technically. I gave this three and a half as well. I gave it three and a quarter. Okay, so you you're you are an Anawai believer right now, <laughs> and an Anzai believer as well. Yeah, it's just it's just the fact that um, oh, I I don't know. I think the other one was just so it was a little more just explosive because of the craziness. Yeah, I this like the other better too. I, I guess I'm a man of extremes. Like I'll I'll go watch the UWFI match where it's very grounded and, like, you know, whatever. Also, sometimes I just want to see, like, uh, a big Samoan guy make another dude explode, and that's what the previous match did for me. All right, and I'm a huge UWI. Hey, listen, we are talking about Thatcher on the main event of the show. We're going to have some comments on this show that made this. maybe some people may not agree with, but we're going to tell you the truth right now. Uh, sometimes you've you got you got to hear the truth that we're going to give you. Uh, but I agree with you pretty much, and uh, I, I like the Anzai match better as well. Uh, very good stuff. But I look forward to seeing what Yoshioka uh, can do in his blocks. I think he's got some interesting matchups. I think he's an interesting guy. And in general, I like that this tournament, we have kind of your technical hard-hitting guy in Thatcher. You've got the champion. You've got strikers like Keno and Nakajima in there. And now you've got a high-flying guy in Yoshioka. you got your big power dudes in Huxley and Anadawai. So, you know, you've got a lot of different styles coming together. That's one of my favorite parts of any tournament, actually. Mm-hmm. Next match was in Block B, and uh, it was the national champion himself, Iode Dr. Wagner Jr. taking on Daiki Inaba here. And this was the first match of the tournament for both men, obviously, the first night. How do you think these two stepped up here? Uh, Dr. Wagner, he's a guy that's gotten a lot of love. Uh, earlier in the year, Inaba and his team with Kitamiya, the guy we just talked about, got a lot of love from people. How, how do you think they handled this? Uh, my my One of my sole notes for this match is Inaba don't got it. Because even though I really love uh, – Elihio uh, Del uh, Wagner Jr. I Inaba really did not impress me here. I just felt like he was clearly below uh, his opponent. Yeah, I agree with that. And, I, and this is a match I predicted could be a major upset. <laughs> like this could be his match. Grab the bull by the horns. Show, hey, I do got it. But for me, I'm kind of with you. Unfortunately, I don't think this match clicked very well. Uh, even compared to some of the earlier matches, you've got good wrestling up and down this card, and this one just didn't do it for me. It wasn't a bad match, and they did do some yeah. things here and there. You know, you had the stuff on the floor with the DDT uh, mm-hmm. on, on the floor from Wagner. Uh, you had some chops here and there. You know, Inaba was using this kind of like uh, octopus stretch on the on the ground, which I thought was a nice little move. But there just wasn't enough to this match, I would say. Uh, but in the end, Wagner won with the Michinoku driver. I'd say pretty average, maybe slightly above. I, I gave this two and three quarters. Uh, I gave it two and a half. I also, there's literally a part in which the, at least the English commentary was literally talking about how he looked unconfident. Yeah, and like, I thought I heard that. <laughs> we were just talking with him. I was like, damn, you were either... Either you really are weird bookers and want me to just think he's a scrub within kayfabe, or you just actually hate this guy. Well, looking at his push sometimes, you could go either way <laughs> from, from it. Although this was kind of his biggest year uh, in terms of he got the tag titles earlier this year. He was a guy in Russell 1. Like, he was the champion. Uh, like, you know, near, near the end. I mean, he is a, a dude, but unfortunately it just didn't. Like you said, he came across kind of like a low-end type of dude in, in his block, which I think most people kind of thought he would be anyway, uh, especially when you see the poster, his portrait on there. He looks really goofy and in, the, in the one shot they have for him. But next up, uh, A block match, you had Keno versus Adam Brooks. Adam Brooks, obviously, the outsider from Australia. Uh, he's been working in WA, so he's got Billy Corgan connections, uh, oh. <laughs> at least, uh, there lately. And Keno, we all know him uh, at the end of the day. Uh, he is blue Keno now. What is your opinion on the blue gear for Keno? 
Uh, it looks a little strange, but you know what? Well, I'm open to see what this new era of Blue Keno brings. I like the design itself. Uh, and blue is my favorite color. I think it's stylish, so I do highly approve. I wish that he would fully commit to it, though. Until you fully commit to Blue Keno, you're not Blue Keno to me. Because when he comes out, he has those red feathers on the blue. Get the blue feathers... And you can be Blue Keno. You can be a champion. But if you're not... Huh? You like Blue Tista back in the day. Blue Tista, of course. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. The Evolution and Shield feud. (laughs) Like I said, yes, that's right. We need Blue Tista back. We need Blue Keno. But the thing is, he committed. He had all blue. Yeah. So that tells you something right there. Keno, you need to get on Batista's level, uh, brother, right now when it comes to the blue. How do you think Brooks looked in this match? I think he started out a little shaky, but it seemed like he got more comfortable as the match went on. Like, it it started at first, I was like, oh, this is not going to be that great, and the structure surprised me a little, but it ended up being pretty fun. I had that exact same comment in my notes, that this started out rough, but they really got it together by the end. Uh, They had a much better match than I thought they would at the start. Obviously, Keno is a very kind of easy wrestler to have against you because he kicks hard and yeah. he's very charismatic. So you can basically do a lot of things uh, that you could get in there. Uh, at one point, uh, he was coming in there where he wanted to do the Swanton Bomb, but Keno got the knees up on that. Uh, they were there. Uh, they did some stuff with some forearm exchanges. They both use bicycle kicks at times, uh, the, the pump kicks there. And uh, they tried to do uh, – Brooks is another one with kind of a submission he did. Uh, you had Keno suplex him on the a- the apron, a dragon suplex on the apron. And uh, in the in the end, Brooks did get the win uh, with uh, the uh, kind of Finley's move, uh, the, the oblivion, like the brain buster onto the knee. Uh, so it worked out by the end. Huh? I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, I like it too. I, I think it's a good move uh, overall. Like very, very devastating looking move. Uh, very legit. I'll say this: What do you think of Brooks's look here? Because if you if you don't see him, he's kind of like wearing these jeans, like white pants, <laughs> pretty much. But they're ripped pants. But there's like designs on them. What, what do you think of the, the pants? It looks a little strange in a like if he walked in on like AEW tomorrow wearing that, I could just kind of yeah. accept it. But it looks a little weird, Noah. Yeah, I mean, this is a good indie look. Like, to me, not something that you would want a star player to have. He kind of looks like, like oh, he's wearing mechanics pants, almost, that they got yeah. ripped up when he was working on a car. And he's just like, all right, I'm coming, to the, I'm coming to the wrestling ring now here. And, I mean, his look, even his face, he kind of has a mechanic look to him with the beard and, and everything, the hair. Uh, but I thought, I thought this was a good match overall. I gave it three and a quarter. What about you? I gave it three. Um, it just, I think I, you pro- are just, uh, differed a little bit on how much the beginning took out of it. But yeah, yeah, I don't think it was anything bad. It was just, I don't know. Like, I'm sure Morris, as he gets more into, not Morris, um, Brooks. Brooks. My bad. Mixed up the white guys. Uh, <laughs> it's a- um, I'm, I'm sure as Brooks gets longer into his, this run in the tournament, he'll look a lot better. I think so, too. There's hope for him to do some big things in the future. And he's a guy – I followed him before. I mentioned this to Dean. He had a one-off tag match in CMLL uh, in Mexico, which is a lucha company uh, that I'm a yeah. big fan of. Uh, he had a one-off tag match. It was him and, like, uh, uh, Mecha Wolf was the other guy he teamed with. And it was versus the Chavez brothers, who I really enjoy. And he looked fantastic in that match. It's like, man, you wish this guy could come around more. But I don't know what that was all about. He left and was never seen again there. He had stuff in Ring of Honor, but then the pandemic hit, and that all kind of went to hell. And then he's been doing NWA. We haven't really – he hasn't been wrestling as much the last couple of years. So this is kind of his return to get a, a name is really his last chance, probably more accurately. And uh, I hope to see him succeed just as a, a human being, obviously, uh, coming mm-hmm. in there. So the Australian love. He's got to do good because Jonathan's going to be there. So he needs to do good and impress people by the time comes. And we're all going to be disappointed in him at the end of the day. By the way, you'll be pleased to hear uh, 2023 is the year in which I finally started watching some CMLL. 
ah, this is one of their best years <laughs> that they've yeah. had. The pandemic years were awful. So mm-hmm. now you, you've actually got good wrestling. Uh, Silverano coming in there. Uh, and Beyond Three Jr. just came back in. That's going to be a heck of a match. Uh, heck of a guy to have. I don't know what they're going to do in the, the anniversario they're building up, but they got some cool stuff going on. Mystico always super over. Got a, lots of feuds going on at once. We'll see what they do uh, for the big show coming up. Well, as I divulged in my Rouge video, I'm a, my favorite kind of luchador is just the ones who are shaped like a big square and hit people really hard. So, you know, there's guys like like Stutka Jr. Oh, that's a good – he is absolutely a square-shaped individual. He's yeah. really proved yeah. to become a Rudo. Like, he's adopted your, your favorite style since he became a Rudo. Yeah. Yeah, he's a square shit menace to society, and I love watching him be mean. That is, isn't that what we all want in our luchadors? Menaces to society. I think it's, it's, like, it's like Roosh, potentially. Roosh is, like, mid-30s, right? Yeah. So, technically, with how long luchadors go, he may not even be in his prime yet. Oh, that's true. He he's at least, he's at least got thirty years, <laughs> like like left to go before he reaches that level. Uh, you you don't get to the Atlantis Fuerza Guerrera level without uh, wrestling for decades and decades and decades. So Roosh could do it. Uh, you know, always different styles of luchadors, but Roosh is definitely one of the best. That guy is the man, and you made a great video about it. So I recommend that. Uh, Which is self approved. I will note. Listen, if it's good enough for Roosh, it's good enough for everybody. I just have you seen that? Uh, have you seen uh, how I showed how I found out Roosh uh, saw the video? How? Okay, so I, he first he retweeted it, but he retweets anything where you mention Roosh. That's but a very standard luchador practice to retweet everything. I, I get I get a a DM from Jose the assistant, which is the which is hilarious, and which it's a it's a, a screenshot of uh, a group chat, I guess that is. Um, Los Ingobernables, and Roosh had texted him the link to the video. So because of the fact that I'm not dead, I assume he liked it. Listen, if it's good enough for Roosh, it's good enough for everybody. And one thing we will not do on this show is disrespect Jose the Assistant. Uh, right yeah. now, he he is the premier source of all your Roosh, Roosh-related news. So shout out to Roosh. Like, really, he seems like he's turned a corner. In Mexico, he was this rowdy guy, um, always beating people up, even in real life committing crimes, <laughs> like assault-related crimes. And in AEW, he's turned into a kind of a good guy at the end of the day. So now he liked your video. He appreciated what you had to say. And, hey, I'm not going to argue with him. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 so congratulations for that, man. I, I, that's really cool. Uh, the, I wish Bruce was in this end one. I was going to say, of all the, the wrestlers that I I would make a video about, that I expect to actually see it, he was not towards the top of the list. Listen, maybe he's trying to work on his English. He's looking for English-related videos of himself. And he learned you think how cool he is. Huh? He's exclusively watching English content that talk about how cool he is. Absolutely. That, that, yes, this is uh, – this. Is, you are new to the lucha scene. I know how luchadors think, my friend, at the end of the day. And because yeah, – wrestlers in general, actually, not just luchadors, but any wrestler will always favor stuff that makes them look cool <laughs> at the end of the day. And Roosh is cool. It's very easy to make him look cool. So yes. uh, I appreciate him a lot. wish he was in one of these tournaments at the end of the day. He's mm-hmm. who they need to send next to New Japan uh, for a G1. He was in a Super Junior, right? Yeah. Sombra was in a G1 before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, so that, that, they can do that. Put, put Roosh in there. That's my man right now. I love Roosh. Um, Give me Roosh versus Shingo any day. Oh, absolutely. Uh, vamos, Munoz family, uh, right now. So you, you got to get him in there. Uh, you know, We'll see what happens with Andrade. Bring him in. Uh, AEW, you got to use my man Roosh some more. You gotta, he needs to be on TV every week. Look at that match he had with Brian Danielson in February. That match was epic. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry for this Roosh tangent during the Noah card. Listen, any show I'm a part of can break off into a Roosh tangent at any time, and that's how it's going to be. So there will be no apologies from you that I accept or give to anyone else. Uh, Roosh is the man, and everyone should watch him more. Or but, absolutely. 
But we will get back to the Noah stuff now because we had uh, Jonathan's pick, Go Shiozaki, in his first match taking on Saxon Huxley, uh, one half of the tag champions with our, our friend and f- uh, fan. We're fans of Timothy Thatcher. He's half of the tag team champions with him. Go comes out, new look coming in, trying to comes in with a flower in the, in the leather jacket, trying to look cool or, or reclaim himself. Uh, coming in here, new look, new style, wanting to win the tournament. Huxley comes in. Uh, he, he's got the the black tights with the orange on there. Uh, Bruiser Brody style, obviously very inspired by the look. What did you think of this? So I believe you mispronounced his name as uh, Saxon the Goat Huxley. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I apologize. I actually, like, weirdly enjoyed this. Because what I've enjoyed out of Huxley tagging with Tim is since Tim is such like a like a scientific like wrestler who breaks you down, having the wild man in there has been really fun. So if you put Saxon against another guy as quite frankly unskilled as uh, um, as he is, it would be bad. However, I really fucking enjoyed just the insanity of a lot of this match, especially because it's pretty short. Like, um, when Saxon just kicks out at one out of nowhere, like, that was some fun stuff. I really was surprised. Yeah, I gotta admit that this didn't do it for me. Uh, I'd hear, like, so this is gonna be our one difference, I think, because we've been pretty much within all the same page and all the other matches so far. But... Yeah. I don't know. At the end of the day, I liked some stuff, and I thought they tried to get creative here, like uh, go going after the knee with, mm-hmm. with some chops here. But then Huxley just kind of no sold all of that creative, okay. creative work uh, going in there. Huxley, he got stuff. He was biting his arm on the chop there. Uh, I thought Go tried his best here to make this work, and I mm-hmm. thought, it, you know, we hope that we could see more like that. There was a great spot, too, where he hit the Go Flasher. On uh-huh. him, uh, really p- impressive, legitimately, and the finish is just to go on lariat for the win. I think that they there was stuff here that could have been interesting if it was more than it was. They went a different direction with it, but I don't think they fully realized the stuff with the leg and just the finish was just kind of okay. I'm just gonna hit the lariat like I usually do and, and win. So I, I didn't really, and obviously Saxon, like you said. There's fun to be had in watching him. He's he is kind of a unique guy to have in the tournament, but I, I wasn't feeling this one for me. But uh, what 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 did you give this on this Squilliam rating system? I went I went three and a half because once again I enjoy car crash wrestling quite a bit. If it probably could have been higher if he remembered to sell the leg, which was a bit of an issue there. Um, but I almost wish, like, to, I almost wish this match went shorter, if it makes any sense. Yeah. Of, like, if they just made, like, five minute, like, firefight where it just kind of ends like a flash knockout sort of thing, that may have done it justice. Because I think what this match fails in at, like, going about, I think, like, eight or nine minutes is that it starts to develop into, like, oh, okay, this is going to be actually a match. And then it's just over. Because if you just, committed to it just being fully a car crash, I think it'd be a lot better. But I don't know. Saxon makes me smile. I can't uh I won't apologize for my uh taste here. You don't gotta apologize because but you're making me feel like Squidward right now with my two star <laughs> rating uh on here. So I I'm I'm going full hater right now. I c I cannot believe that this happened. But I, I'm, go, I'm going full Squidward here to two stars at the end of the day. Uh, but I, I hope more for more from Go. Hopefully Saxon can do some fun things. I, I think there's an outline of a fun big guy here. Uh, I just don't think he's fully realized it, in, in my view anyway. So we'll have to see how it goes. But listen, we all have our favorites. You represent – Sax needs representation on this show. And you are bringing that right now, so I appreciate that. Actually, the only wrestler who follows me on Twitter, so I have to, I have to rep him. Look at that! I, I'm going to give it two and a quarter now. I'm, I'm upgrading oh, my rating. Oh, oh, oh. I'm following you. All right, now th- these are the rules of Squidward ratings. There are no rules uh, at the end of the day. Uh, What's so a- props for him? Have you enjoyed his tag work with Thatcher? 
Definitely not as much as Thatcher and Suzuki, I would say. <laughs> oh, I can agree 100% with that. I'm, I'm not a big fan, to be, to be honest with you. I, I can't say he enamors me as much. Uh, but, like I said, I think there's an outline of something good there. I can see what Hideki would see in him and why he wanted him to come over. I just don't think he's fully fleshed it out. And you hope you can, he can get it there. And like you said, maybe that means, maybe fleshing it out means leaning into that Bruiser Brody style of wild man, you know, like just car crash. That gives you a unique spot. So I'm I'm not anti-Huxley on his own being in this tournament. I just don't think he's where he could be, and maybe he will get to in the future. I'm excited to when later in the tournament, if he can, when he gets some matchups against like other like Haas wrestlers, yeah. I think that he's able to shine. Yeah, like, have a wild, crazy, like you said, the five-minute match with, like, uh, you know, there, there's other guys here that you could look at, um, you know, that you could do some big things with, like, Anawai. If they come mm-hmm. in there, the two kind of guys people look at as maybe lesser, if they could just go out and just have a wild brawl, I could get that. Give, give us some blood in some of these matches. Like I so said, go back to that Bruiser Brody style. Give, give us some blood, do some things, go crazy, tear up the guardrails, threaten the fans. Make us all fear for our lives, even through the TV. That, that's what we need more of. The match I would uh, give the blueprint for that is there is one in the initial Wrestle 1 uh, like Grand Prix. There's a match which is, uh, I've said before the show that I'm a big fan of Bob Sapp because I yeah. like, like Car Crash, which is hilarious because my two tastes are like that and then like, you know, Danielson. But Sapp, uh, it's Sapp versus Giant Bernard, and it's weirdly good. Because both guys commit to this is going to go three minutes because none of us have the cardio to go more than three minutes. But we're going to make we're this is going to end when one of us dies. I think Huxley could do well in a match like that. I am all for that. And we we will see listen, this is one of the few times you'll say people need to learn from Albert at, at wrestling. Yeah. But that's what we've come upon now. Uh, but, hey, listen, Jack Bernard did have a good run in Japan. I mean, let's be honest. He, he did get over. He was, like, I was surprised when I saw it because this is, like, sometimes you end up doom-scrolling cage match, like, trying to find, <laughs> looking at something. And he kept popping up over there, and I'm like, okay, the, it, there's no way he's he's absolutely horrible. And then you watch those matches over there, and you're like, whoa, the Japanese crowd really love him. Yeah, he was really over. That the team with him and Anderson like was really popular for a long time with them, and he in particular got really over with the crowd. I mean, everybody likes big guys at the end of the day, right? I think secretly that it's human nature to like these big dudes at the end of the day, and hopefully we can get more of that. And uh, that's something that's kind of gone away a little bit in recent mm-hmm. years is, is the big guy. So I will. You're winning me over. A on Huxley right now. I, I have to say, I, I'm coming in with a more, you're opening my mind a little bit. That's what you're doing right now. But I still go with the full Squidward. But I, I gave him some props for following you on Twitter. That's all <laughs> I can do at the, at the end of the day. Uh, let's see how we, I think we'll agree about this main event though. As it mm-hmm. is, our, our top guy, Timothy Thatcher, taking on the champ, Jake Lee. We talked about him a little bit earlier. And you mentioned that Jake Maybe not your favorite guy, but with the right opponent, he could deliver. I say Thatcher is a great opponent. How did Jake live up to this match? I thought he be, he had really good chemistry with him, which really didn't uh, surprise me, or r- really did surprise me rather, because like the grappling from on Jake's part held up, and I didn't expect him to do that with Thatcher, just because you know Thatcher is known for this really like beautiful intricate grapple fests he goes on and then like Jake hung with him and I was like damn that's a that's a good story you guys are telling yeah and Jake he does have an MMA background he actually left wrestling for a year or two (laughs) to try his hand at MMA uh, a decade ago or so from all Japan he came back to wrestling obviously and has had a good career so far since and here I, I agree with you I, I really enjoyed this match uh, I I thought this was like a shade below the Soya Nakajima match obviously a lot different in terms of styles yeah. but I really thought it was a great main event uh, Thatcher at point was doing his thing and then you talk about we kind of talked about it on, before the show Meathead Wrestling 
Mm-hmm. What better embodies that than a man headbutting somebody's elbow that he threw? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> like, when he did that, it was so stupid, but so charming at the same time that you can't help but love it. At the well, end of- a- Sorry, go ahead. No, I- you go on. There's a secret thing about Thatcher that I think people miss the point, and I kind of talked about this in my video. But people are like, oh, he's grounded. He, uh, you know, he's he's legit. He's gritty. I I don't care. I, I like it. But Th- Thatcher is like, I've always weirdly saw him as like, he's a charisma guy to me. He has such good, like, just God-given, like, body language and, like, physical acting that I think is on a level of very, very few men in wrestling are on his level. So that kind of thing you're talking about where him just being a complete fucking weird gremlin man is exactly what I love. So I was glad he was able to get that out here with Lee. Oh, absolutely. We've seen times like go back to the match he had with in involved with Chris Hero. I mean, that guy had so much charisma, like physical charisma, not necessarily outgoing because there's different kinds of charisma. Some people think it's just like Hiromu explosion, like off the wall antics, things like that, which is very charismatic. Don't get me wrong. But if you could tell, you could show charisma with just your physical language, that says a lot to me too. And that's a very talented thing that he does have. I totally agree with you uh, that people kind of downplay that aspect of him a lot, in my opinion. But uh, he is also very gritty and, and grounded and hard hitting and things like that as well. He showed that all off. We saw some big suplexes. <laughs> now there was a part too that I really liked where uh, he basically hit a big suplex off the ropes and then he went to like kneeing him in the back. And I was like, yeah. oh, this is like vintage Thatcher here. Like this is what I love. Uh, Leaf followed up again. I totally agree with you. I thought he did a great job on the technical aspects of the match, but in the end. It came in with uh, Lee coming in with some big knees of his own, and then he hits the the big face kick into the corner, the the Haluva kick, uh, pretty much. And it got the win here. Uh, I gave this four stars. I thought it was a great match. Same rating as I gave the other one. I gave it three and three quarters. I thought it was just a little bit. Uh, I think if they wanted to, they could have cut a little bit. They could have cut it a little bit down. But I right, just a twenty minute match too. Yeah. Yeah. I but like I think if you traded the run times of this one and the first match, both matches might actually be better. That's a good point. I, I think that too. I think that makes a lot of sense as well, actually, now that you bring it up. You could have switched it over. I like them both just in different ways o- o- overall. So I, I did like that uh, going in there. It was interesting, and I really enjoyed this. I know like some people hated on it. I think that's just a divisive guy. But for me and, and both of us, I think we both always enjoy his style. And, and I will say, I kind of had a similar opinion to you about Jake for a long time, and I still kind of do. But I think, again, what I said earlier kind of defines that. Because of the roster they have around him, he actually totally works. Because I think the majority of his run has been good and above expectation uh, from you yeah. might have if you just think of him on his own. And so I think he's a very good a champion for right now. Obviously, it's going to lead to something. Whoever wins the tournament at the end of the day, probably. And unless your uh, fear comes to fruition, he just wins the tournament himself. Uh, you know, I think they're going to build to something big with the title coming out. But I think he's going to have some good matches. They set him up with a good block, and Thatcher's a great first opponent for him. I thought Thatcher might even get the win here because I think he's a very good like. He's not going to be the world champion, but he's a good filler opponent, kind of like what he was with Kaito last year. He's not going to be the world champion, but he should be. But he should be, yes. I, if it was up to me, he would be, and Hideki as well. <laughs> like uh, Hideki would have won the title already by now, and that would be the match we had, the Hideki versus Thatcher <laughs> for the title. But I don't run Noah, so I can't do that, and I can't make it happen, unfortunately. But hey, they booked, they booked him strong. Who's to say in a, a year or two he won't be in the mix? And I, I think he should be in the mix for sure. Like, he's a guy that should always be at that title level, a like challenger, I think. Uh, and like you said, who knows? It's Noah. Like, at the end of the day, they could, they could go off and do that, and I would definitely love it. I highly approve of this if one of my favorites gets the title. But uh, right now, I think he's doing some great work in this tournament. He should have a great tournament, uh, hopefully. So, uh, overall, first night of the tournament here, first, first night of the N1 victory. Uh, two great matches, in my opinion, with the main event and the opening match. 
and there was mm-hmm. two other matches I recommended, and Yuki Amasa and Lance and Anzai, and you had Lance and Anzai and Go and Huxley as your yeah. rig. So either way, just a little bit difference for a piece for us. I have to say, you have to give this a thumbs up just as a, a fan watching, in my opinion. Yeah, it's. Int- I said this also before the uh, the podcast started, but um, w- we're gonna say the G one this year has been mixed. And nothing here truly offended me the way that some of the G1 matches have. Because oh. when Noah when Noah really messes up, it's generally pretty entertaining. Like, I know you didn't like the Huxley match that much, but you can't say that Huxley uh, kind of being bad for eight minutes is not better than evil being bad for 20 minutes. Oh, a million times agree. Like I said, I didn't love that match. I didn't even think it was good, but I didn't think it was terrible. I thought they – like I said, there was an outline to a match I would have liked in there. I just don't think they fully realized it. Something like Evil is just an abomination. Like there's nothing good – like there's no redeeming qualities to his matches. So I never liked seeing them. Uh, even like – even stuff like Coughlin, like he's okay. Like I don't hate him, but there's nothing about him that really, and that, you know, makes me want to watch him more. I did mm-hmm. this people here. This whole tournament, and I was so impressed with Anawai. That's a guy that I, I wasn't expecting anything out of, but I think your point on him stands. Great on offense, selling, no. But in this particular match, he had Anzai, the god of selling, <laughs> against him. Uh, so it all worked out in the end. I was really impressed. And hopefully Hux- Huxley can have that kind of moment in this tournament, because I didn't expect anything from Anawai, but he showed me something on this night. And uh, I'm hopeful for Huxley. Like you said, even if not, this is going to be better than the G1. I, I can almost guarantee it. When you look at the quality, there's, you know, at max, one or two guys you even have doubts of at the days. Or may, maybe three if you count Brooks, even though I think we both came around on him by the end of his match. So this tournament yeah. looks, is great on paper. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun going forward. And like you said, even if something turns out, I mean, even in All Japan, the Champion Carnival, there was a, a hor- – and I'm a Cyrus Defendor uh, on this show because I know Striga doesn't like, didn't like him that much. But I defended him, and he did all right, but he did have one horrible match versus Heok, which is among the worst of the year, uh, I would say. So hopefully we can avoid that. And there's nobody I don't think that, that will have – you'll see this with the way they use him. So I'm very positive on this night and positive on the tournament overall. Yeah, if we continue at this rate – it will be a honestly pretty damn good tournament if we get, like you said, like two uh, matches that are good to great for a card, and like the worst one is just one you personally didn't vibe with instead of like a, a abomination. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah, and, and I agree with that. And we haven't even reached the big matches yet with your main characters like your Goes and Kenos. Uh, that they, they were kind of facing, they they weren't facing each other, so. Uh, once we get to the end of the tournament, we're going to have the big matches. And, and Thatcher's going to deliver some bangers uh, in this. I think Wagner Jr. is another guy. Uh, we didn't love his match on this show, but he's going to have some great matches. He's been delivering all year. So there's lots of cool stuff to look forward to. Main characters like Saxon Huxley versus Lance and Y. That's right. The, who is the, the head of the table? And, and that, match is gonna be, that match is going to be either really horrible or, like, surprisingly good, but with no in-between. And we'll have fun talking about it either way. That's the, that's the good thing that they bring us. So uh, that is the cool thing about this show. Uh, as always, thanks to everybody for listening. But, Squill, um, you know, it's so fun talking to you. I, I really enjoyed your takes on the show. Really enjoyed discussing all of this with you. Uh, thank you for all the good work you've done on your videos. Can't wait for your next one with, with Inoki and Saito. What do you want to say to the people out there? Any plugs, any last words? You can put anything you want out there. The floor is yours. If you enjoy my somewhat extreme opinions on professional wrestling, definitely check out my channel. Uh, unless you don't like Timothy Thatcher, then don't check out my channel and go rethink your life decisions. Uh, but, yeah, my channel is Wrestling with the Narrative. And I'm also going to be writing articles for the near in the near future about – well, I have one out – of topics that won't make a full video, but I would like to put something out on it. So that is on my Kofi. If you would like to give me money, but that's about it. And listen, even if you don't like that, you're, look, you got other videos on there. You got Seamus, you got Roosh. You got to yeah. like one of these guys at least. 
Oh, I'm just saying if you don't like Thatcher, I just don't like consider you of moral value. You know. Oh, well, you don't even want their their support then. In that case, if they don't like Thatcher. Uh, One second. Okay, I'm, I'm not. I don't want to speak for you, but that's a bold strategy. There, I, I like I like the cut of your jib, but hey. You stand on your own two feet. You don't play by the rules. You play by your own rules, and I appreciate that. I'm a regular go <laughs> Sid. <laughs> yes, I, I would say that as well. That's not a word I would have used to describe you, words that I have used to describe you, but that's okay. You decide your own. You choose your fate right now, Spoil, and I appreciate that. So uh, thank you to everybody out there for listening. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, this will go up on the free feed. The rest of them are going to be on Patreon probably till the final. Uh, we got some stuff, too, on the Stardom Show, uh, Stardom Tournament, Five Star Grand Prix, me and Sandre doing that. Got some Toyota Tuesdays uh, covering all of the old school Joshi wrestling you love, uh, or at least I love anyway. Uh, we, we're talking about that on there. More stuff coming. G1, we've reviewed a bunch of shows on there, although me and String have done a lot of the free feed as well. It's still fun to listen to my solo thoughts on some of the shows as well. Uh, cool stuff all about. So check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash Eastern Lariat. Uh, even if you hate Thatcher, I, I'm, I, I'm not principled like Squill. I, I'll take, I'll take anything, any support I get, even just kind words, even if you don't want to pay me anything. Just, just say nice things to me and make me happy in my life at the end of the day. But also support the show on Twitter at Eastern Lariat. Uh, at Viva underscore zero, shout out Ray, uh, coming up with the anniversary of her death, uh, RIP to her. Um, thank you, everybody, again. As always, you know I love you. And until next time, sayonara. <laughs>